Welcome to the overview of this year's Young Hoosier Book Award program for the intermediate grades 4 and 5 for the 2014-2015 school year. What's the purpose of the Young Hoosier Book Award program? It's designed to encourage Indiana students to include more current literature as part of their recreational reading. Last year, more than 70,000 students participated and selected the book Smile as their top choice. How are the books chosen? Students, teachers, and media specialists from around the state nominate the books that they have read. An author must have been an American who is still alive, and the book should have been published within the past five years. Then, a committee reads all of the nominated books and votes for the 20 that they believe should be on the list. What kind of special things do we do here at Fox Hill to celebrate this program? We hope to have literary lunches, we'll have a voting party in the spring, and again, we'll celebrate with an end of the year party for those who have met their goals. So, what books are, on, are nominated for the 2014 2015 school year? First is the book Arlington, the story of our nation's cemetery, written and illustrated by Chris Demarest. So what do you think of when you hear the words, let's go visit a cemetery? You probably think of the creepy haunted places we see in movies with overgrown grass, crumbling headstones, and a ghost or two floating about. Well, most cemeteries are not like that at all. In fact, the United States has 146 cemeteries that are designated as national cemeteries. National cemeteries are generally military cemeteries containing the graves of U.S. military personnel, veterans, and their spouses. These national cemeteries are actually places of interest for tourists to visit and are rich in history and stories of the people buried there. One example is Arlington National Cemetery, located just out of Washington, D.C. In the book Arlington, the story of our nation's cemetery, you will learn lots of interesting facts about how this cemetery was created 150 years ago, about who is buried there, and about the ceremonies that still take place there on a daily basis. The next book is Breaking Stalin's Nose, written and illustrated by Eugene Yelchin. Sasha Zaychek has known the laws of the Soviet young pioneers since the age of six. The young pioneer is devoted to Comrade Stalin, the Communist Party, and Communism. A young pioneer is a reliable comrade and always acts according to conscience. A young pioneer has the right to criticize shortcomings. But now that it is finally time to join the young pioneers, the day that Sasha has awaited for so long, everything seems to go awry. He breaks a classmate's glasses with a snowball. He accidentally damages a bust of Stalin in the school hallway. And worst of all, his father, the best communist he knows, was arrested just last night. Buffalo Bird Girl, a Hadatsa story by S. D. Nelson. This fascinating picture book biography tells the childhood story of Buffalo Bird Woman, a Hadatsa Indian born around 1839. Through her true story, you will learn what it was like to be part of this Native American community that lived along the Missouri River in the Dakotas, a society that depended more on agriculture for food and survival than on hunting. Just like Buffalo Bird Girl spent her days with a routine of chores and playing with friends. However, her life was also filled with unexpected dangers. The next book is Cardboard by Doug Tennepal. When cardboard creatures come magically to life, a boy must save his town from disaster. Cam's 
down and out father gives him a cardboard box for his birthday and he knows that it is the worst present ever. So to make the best of a bad situation, they bend the cardboard into a, a man and to their astonishment, it comes magically to life. But the neighborhood bully, Marcus, warps the powerful cord cardboard into his own evil creations that threaten to destroy them all. Chuck Close, Facebook, by Chuck Close. Chuck Close, an American artist still living today, is known for his larger-than-life portraits of the human face using a, an array of art mediums. In this autobiography, he shares his techniques, successes, failures, and the thinking behind his art. Having suffered from dyslexia as a child, and then later paralyzed by an aneurysm as an adult, he talks of his struggles and his drive to overcome any obstacle he encountered to achieve his goals. Citizen Scientists Be a Part of Scientific Discovery from Your Own Backyard by Lori Griffin Burns Does the chirping of a frog or the sound of a bird intrigue you? Would you like to find out more about the types of insects and animals living in your neighborhood? Read Citizen Scientists and learn about these things, as well as how you can become a citizen scientist and contribute to important scientific research. Guinea Dog by Patrick Jennings. Rufus has been dreaming of getting a dog. His best friend has one. His worst friend has one, but his dad has a few objections. They whine, they gnaw, they bark, they scratch, they beg, they drool. Rufus pays no attention when his mom offers her think-outside-the-box suggestion because she can't be serious. She can't be. Oh, she can be. And she actually comes home with a guinea pig. And if Rufus's dad thinks dogs are a problem, he won't know what hit him when he meets the guinea pig that thinks she's a dog. She barks. She bites. She'll eat your homework. Kindred Souls by Patricia McLaughlin. Ten-year-old Jake has always been close to his grandfather, Billy. So close that Jake's mother calls them kindred souls. Each morning, Jake and Billy take a walk around the family farm. Billy often tells Jake stories of living in a sod house on the prairie. When Billy goes to the hospital, Jake decides the best gift that he can give his beloved grandfather is a sod house. Billy moves to the sod house when he leaves the hospital and he spends his last days living there. Louisa May's Battle, How the Civil War Led to Little Women by Kathleen Kroll. Louisa May Alcott is best known for writing the book, Little Women, but few are aware of the experience that influenced her writing. Most, that was her time spent as a nurse during the Civil War caring for soldiers' wounds and writing letters home for them inspired a new realism in her work. When her own letters home were published as Hospital Sketches, she had her first success as a writer. The acclaim for her new writing style inspired her to use this approach in Little Women, which was one of the first novels to be set during the Civil War. It was the book that made her dreams come true and a story that she never could have written without the time she spent healing others in service of our country. May Be by Carolyn Starr Rose Set on the Kansas prairie in the late 1800s, May, a 12-year-old girl, is helping a neighbor's farm while waiting for her father to return for a long, from a long trip. Soon, winter comes. The neighbors leave, and May 
is left alone to take care of herself. I've known it since last night. It's been too long to expect them to return. Something's happened. Nick Bishop's Snakes, written by Nick Bishop. Yikes! Join naturalist Nick Bishop for a closer look at scaly, scary snakes. Snakes are scaly, scary, silent predators. They use powerful venom or crushing strength to overwhelm their victims. Then they swallow them whole. With breathtaking full-page images, award-winning photographer Nick Bishop introduces the terrifying and beautiful world of snakes. The simple, engaging text presents both basic information and captivating details about the appearance, habits, and remarkable abilities of these amazing reptiles. An index and glossary are included, along with an author's note detailing his research and some fun stories behind the photographs. Plunked by Michael Northrup. Jack Morgans thinks he's got it all figured out. He has his batting routine down, and now that he's in sixth grade, he has a lock on a starting spot in Little League. Well, almost. Okay, not really. It's a two-man race, though, so he's got a shot. And if he can manage to have a not totally embarrassing conversation with Kate, his team's killer shortstop, he'll be golden. But when a powerful stray pitch turns his world upside down, Jack discovers it's going to take more than a love of baseball to get his game back. He loves baseball. Baseball is his, is his entire life. But that quickly changes when he's hit in the head by a bad pitch. Soon, Jack becomes afraid of the ball and the game. He has to make the most difficult decision of his life. Can Jack face his fears and go back to baseball? Read Plunked to find out. The Second Life of Abigail Walker by Frances O'Rourke Dowell. Anders is homeschooled, and while he's worried that Abby's former friends are out to get her, he's even more worried about his dad a war veteran, home from Iraq, who is dangerously disillusioned with life. But if his dad can finish his po poem about the exhibition, expedition of Lewis and Clark, if he can effectively imagine what it is to experience freshness and innocence, maybe he will be okay. As Abby dives into the unexpected role of research assistant, she just as unexpectedly discovers that by helping someone else find hope in the world, there is plenty there for herself as well. Sophie Simon Solves Them All by Lisa Graff. Sophie Simon is extremely smart for a third grader. She actually enjoys learning about calculus and she reads high school and college textbooks for fun. She also doesn't see the need to have friends, even though her parents constantly try to get her to be like all the other kids. A few of so Sophie's classmates have some problems that they feel will only be solved with Sophie's help. Will she be able to help them come up with solutions? Will Sophie learn the value of friendship? Will she ever be the well-adjusted or normal kid her parents want her to be? The Spindlers by Lauren Oliver. What if your brother was replaced by a copy? Oh, he looks and sounds like your brother, but he is most definitely not the same boy. If you're Liza, it means you're off on a quest below to rescue him. She'll make troglogs, nids, and lumber lumpkins, not to mention teaming up with a rat who insists on wearing a wig and lipstick on her quest 
to rescue Patrick from the spindlers, the menacing spider creatures who have stolen Patrick's soul and may very well claim her own before the journey ends. The Summer of the Gypsy Moths by Sarah Pennypacker. Eleven-year-old Stella misses her unreliable mom, but she loves it at Great Aunt Louise's house. Louise lives on Cape Cod, where Stella hopes her mom will some time, time day come and settle down. The only problem? Angel, the foster kid Louise has taken in. The two girls live together, but there is no way they'll ever be friends. Then, Louise suddenly passes away one morning, and Stella and Angel decide not to tell anyone. Now they have to depend on each other for survival. Now they are forced to trust each other with the biggest secret ever. The Trouble with Chickens, a J.J. Tully Mystery by Doreen Cronin. J.J. Tully is a former search and rescue dog who is trying to enjoy his retirement after years of performing daring missions, saving lives. So he's not terribly impressed when two chicks named Dirt and Sugar, who look like popcorn on legs, and their chicken mom show up, demanding his help to find their missing siblings. Driven by the promise of a cheeseburger, J.J. begins to track down clues. Is Vince the funnel hiding something? Are there dark forces at work? Or is J.J. not smelling the evidence that's right in front of him? The Venge Keep Prophecies by Brian Farre. Jaxter Grimjinx was born into a family of thieves. So surely this must be his fate as well. Wrath reed, sap of an urnum tree, men's grass, rank stamen, spatter bite bat milk. These are just a few of the ingredients Jackster must collect if he is going to help save his family, help save Vengekeep from the horrible prophecies that are to ruin it forever. And to collect these, Jackster must leave Vengekeep through the catacombs and travel to far away lands. With a bit of money and his friend Callie by his side, Jackster sets off on the adventure of a lifetime. Will he be able to find out, find all of these rare ingredients in time to save Vengekeep? There's only one way for you to find out. Wildlife by Cynthia de Felice. A boy, a dog, a gun, and a backpack full of snacks. These are the things Eric thinks will help him survive in the North Dakota wilderness with winter approaching. But running away from his grouchy grandfather and living off the land is challenging. Find out for yourself how Eric survives and what he learns about himself and his grandfather. Wonder by R. J. Palacio. We all know how hard adjusting to fifth grade can be, right? This story is about a boy, Augie Pullman, who has a facial deformity, who is trying to go to school for the very first time. Despite his appearance, Augie wants to be a normal, ordinary fifth grader. But can he? Will he make friends? And can the people around him learn to see past his appearance? Read Wonder to be inspired by Augie's journey. Where will you be able to find all of these books? We have several copies of each of these books available here at the Fox Hill Media Center. All of the books are also available at any branch of the Indianapolis Marion County Public Library. 
Many of these books can be purchased at bookstores in your community or from the Scholastic Book Fair later this fall. Enjoy your reading. We will look forward to talking with you about the books and seeing you at the end of the year party.